Good evening. Good to be with you. I'm glad you're um, here tonight. Uh, it was a great day today. It was good to see you all. See happy faces. 53 people uh, coming to worship. Uh, we we honestly did not think we would have that many, and we were grateful to see it. Grateful to see you presence. Thank you for um, caring for one another and keeping distance and wearing masks, I could tell that you wanted to hug each other so much, and I understand that. Um, but uh, we, uh, we are being safe, and we'll hopefully down the road be able to continue to progress. Um, we pray that, or I pray, that, um, that people uh, outside of the churches understand the importance uh, of, uh, of wearing masks to keep each other safe um, you know and and I'll be honest with you I know many of you've read it the research you can look at one study and then look at another study um, but I think in truth if it gives us a better chance to not spread that if we have uh, this virus I think that is enough reason for a small inconvenience. Uh, now, I will tell you this, and this is on there were a couple of people that asked me this morning, and I had ordered some gaiters is what I've decided to wear. You saw me wearing it around my neck. Um, and the ones I wear, they're pretty comfortable except for uh, someone who has a big neck, but when you're wearing it on your face, it is very, very comfortable. Um, so if you want that information, we can uh, pass that out. They were, uh, they were very affordable, um, but uh, you know I can help look up some of that. And then also, if you are uh, bigger like me, you wear you know size 20 collar. Um, we'll find I've got some others that I and I've got another one that I wear that's fairly comfortable as well, uh, and it fits me a little bit better. Uh, but uh, but you know those are some important things, and to do that and to do it um, to do it uh, with as low cost is as possible um, I know is uh, an important thing but uh, but uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna watch out for you as you watch out for me and like I said I'm I'm grateful for what you did today and I was grateful to see you there as we worship together it was funny while we would sing um, you did well I could hear just the small tone of some of your voices singing you weren't singing out you were doing so to care for one another but you still sang had a very very low tone and that was um ah, it was nice ah, so beautiful it was beautiful uh, to hear but i, I want to say thank you to uh, jimmy taylor uh, for all his help and his work i definitely want to say thank you uh, to uh, to jackson and helping us this morning um, um oh gosh sound crew thank you for for what you did it was good to have you there this morning helping to jockey the system um for larry mcgugan for all he's done for uh, to pete uh, to carl uh, harry carter has prayed for us uh, don waldrop and what he did uh, the way we worked this morning with bryce taking the um the temperatures and I'm going to flat out tell you that the the uh, the ushers did an incredible job in, in working thank you for what you did uh, and then Heather thank you for what you did you you this is not your last on my thought your last because I am going to share that Heather was like oh this is weird I'm in front of a big crowd you know we'll have somewhere around 14 to 20 in that early service and and her and Lynette, of course, have been singing with just a small number of folks there to help during um, put things together. Um, but uh, it was it was great to to again great to see you. But Heather, it was so funny, and you did an incredible job today, and we're grateful. But I, I tell you the one thing that I am the proudest of in seeing this morning is us again, us being together. Um, sharing and blending our worship and blending our experience uh, together um, and, and and it's it's um, it's fantastic it's incredible 
and uh, you know there's some things that I'm thinking of right now that we might be able to try and we'll uh, announce that at a later time in order to help enhance the, the worship service um, but it was a great day to be together to worship God and uh, thank you for coming and thank you for being so kind in uh, expressing love for one another and how you uh, carried out that act of love with social distancing and wearing masks so blessings uh, on that but let's uh I'd, I'd like to sing tonight if we may uh, let's sing together oh yeah one announcement too remember it's july 12th when we're going to honor uh, our seniors uh, on that sunday morning so i know that many of you will want to be present we may have to i don't know bust out a couple of walls so we can keep spacing uh on that sunday morning um but as we as we do that, you know, just be patient. We'll take those extra care. We'll take that extra care um, and, and work toward what we need to do uh, to make that happen. Um, and then next Sunday will be um, uh, the, the Remembrance of Independence Day. Um, and so I know that you will want to be there for that as well. Um, but let's sing tonight let's sing uh one stanza of blessed assurance we'll sing together uh, blessed assurance jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine heir of salvation purchase of god born of his spirit washed in his blood this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long I do want to apologize again tomorrow, this morning, for this morning. I did uh, make the faux pas and I left it on my Facebook page. So I posted the service later on uh, the church's Facebook page. And I apologize for doing that um, this morning. But we will again. Yeah, just blame Jimmy. Jimmy didn't remind me what he was supposed to do. What I was supposed to do. He was the one that usually reminds me. But um but I am sorry for that. My my deepest apologies as we uh, that I did that this morning. But if you will, let's uh, spend some time in prayer. I know that um, you know there's there's a lot of concerns. There's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot going on in our church. Um, um, you know, Jerry Hall knee surgery. Pray for him. Uh, we've had people that have lost loved ones recently uh, you know during the pandemic uh, you know and I that's um that's a that's a very it, it was it was more difficult even during this time uh, for those things to have people that would be hospitalized or sick uh, because of the limitations of going into the hospitals uh, so we, we still want to pray for them I know that those those situations are 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 deep uh, within them. Um, we got Jeff and and Mike um, who lost his brother, so we wanna we wanna definitely be in prayer for them and remembering them and remember all the people. Uh, Mr. Weldon, uh, as he is still in the uh, still in the rehab rehabilitation center, we wanna pray for him, uh, Peggy De Leon, who's still recovering, I'm sure, from her surgery. Uh, but uh, know that she's well and all the folks that could not come today uh, you know Miss Becky was not able to come and she made that choice but we want to pray for them we want them to know and remember they are loved maybe give them a call this week and say hey how you doing um, uh, you know maybe this is a shout out to BJ BJ will make brownies for you you know she's so good and kind hearted doing things like that uh, just help people know that they are remembered so let's let's pray so i'll give you a moment to pray where you are in silence uh, kind of enjoy the sounds if you can hear them over the microphone uh, but uh, enjoy the silence and i'll 
pan it around actually so you can see a view of the trees which are in the background as we pray together. Let's pray. Father, for the stillness of this time, may we still ourselves and still our hearts and listen to you speaking to us. Well, Father, I do know not what we hear as individuals, but there is a call that is going out. And I pray that we hear that, to hear our place in answering that call to love one another. Father, for the anguish in our world and the pain that abides in so many, Father, we pray comfort and care upon them. We pray that they may know peace. We pray for those who are sick. And Father, may they know the healing touch. But as they rest and convalesce and heal, Father, may they know and feel your presence as if it is sitting beside them. And for those that still grieve and who are grieving, oh God. May they know your blessing and may they know your hope and Father for all of us may all of our hearts feel your presence daily as we walk down the path that you make for it's in Christ's name that we pray these things Amen. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew. We're going to be in chapter 10, the book of Matthew. We're going to, we're going to do something a little uh, nice today, um, tonight. It's been, there's been a lot of uh, deep, hard lessons to learn. And um, tonight we're going to be reminded of some of the simple things that we can do uh, to be people of God. And to bring the kingdom of God, be a part of bringing God's kingdom to this earth. So, just short, few short verses tonight. Matthew ten, verse forty, is where we'll begin. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one who sent me. And anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth. 
he will certainly not lose his reward. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is at the tail end of the chapter that introduces the calling or the sending, if you will, of the of the twelve. Those that are disciples of Jesus, and don't don't be fooled, there there were many more disciples, but these were twelve, twelve of his closer disciples. They were given authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease. And he is closing his instruction to them at the end of chapter 10. And he simply tells them, He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives the one. He's reminding them that this is the offer that they're giving as people practice and give them even the slightest bit of ear to hear a message. The slightest bit of hospitality. Hospitality is such an incredible gift that we give one another. We do it in so many ways. And you know, obviously the way that we think most about is when we invite somebody in, how welcoming we are, how we may provide their need. Jesus doesn't even expect a little meal. All he expects and hopes is that they receive a cold drink of water, something to carry them on the way. Water is a special, special element in that world. It's precious. It's water that cleanses, water that you bathe in, water that gives fulfillment, living water that gives life. Now, I've often said that when we share communion together, first and foremost, it's a family meal. But when we share a glass of water together to people, it's an incredible gift. It's one of the things that in churches past that we've done is go to a local festival or fair, maybe even a 5K that's run in town, and we offer a free bottle of water. And then occasionally to some of the kids that come by, we offer a a lollipop or even better, a nice cold popsicle. Something to refresh and renew. Even offering up a seat underneath our tent. We've even had people that have come into those tents and (laughs) what we would do is take a a rubber, uh, a, 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 a pool boat that you would fill up and we would put we put that ice in that and we just simply dump cases of water and usually at the end of the day you'll have some crazy kid come up and say can I dive in and they'll do it and it is cold but it gives life hospitality gives life it was needed so much in that part of the world it wasn't like you could go to the local next local town and stop by and make a reservation at the holiday inn it wasn't like every corner had a hyatt regency or a motel six hospitality was important early on it was part of the the system to teach and educate As travelers would come through and people would open up their homes or invite them into the family inn, they would shout stories and tell tales. Some of them we even hear told in the early scriptures in the Old Testament. Those are stories that were passed on and passed down through the generations. Some of them came from lands far and wide. Being hospitable, if you think about it, (laughs) 
usually costs something. It costs time. And remember, time is the most valuable thing that you have because there is only so much of it and you cannot make any more of it. There's also a risk when you are hospitable. There's a risk of rejection. There's a risk that maybe someone will not like what they offer you. Sadly, even more today, sometimes there's a risk to your safety occasionally. So we don't invite people that we do not know into our homes much anymore. But even when we do invite people into our homes that we know much, hospitality is such a welcomed gift for one another. And think about how big a blessing not only it is to the people with which we share our hospitality gratefully, how big a blessing it is to us. Usually we sit. And we share stories and tales, share remembrances. We tell stories about, well, last year at this festival, it wasn't quite this hot, so you had a lot of water left. Well, those things happen. But it's when those years are the hottest that people greatly, even more so, appreciate it. But they appreciate it any time. A place to sit place to get a cold drink of water, and a place to share life stories. For some, hospitality is a challenge. That's okay. I understand. Sometimes it's just not the gift that we have, but it is important to try to be hospitable as best you can. Because Jesus told his disciples, go to these homes, go to these places. If they receive you, they receive me. And if they receive me, they're receiving the one who sent me. So we are sharing those things with each other. And in truth, in our hospitality, we share the very heart of Christ. And the reward that we receive really is eternal. Stories that we may hear and know and listen to and share all of our lives and that may pass on from generation to generation. So as a church and as a family, let's figure out and think about ways in which our church can do more things to be hospitable, to be involved in the happenings of the town and the events that are going on. More ways we can be involved in the lives of our fellow churches, more involved in the lives of our citizens, more involved in our schools. And let's be hospitable. Let's be hospitable not only as we invite them to come in to our facilities, but let us be hospitable in going out. And remember when they receive you, they receive a little piece of Jesus. Now that is a great gift to share. So join me as we think about ways to be more involved and to share more of what God calls us and asks us to share, both as the host and the hosted in practicing hospitality. It's going to be short for tonight, but it certainly was great to be with you, great to be with you now. Know that you are always a blessing to me. Peace be with you until we meet again. Will you pray with me? Father, may we learn this gift of hospitality. May those who are blessed with it share how to share with others 
in marvelous ways. And may we be open to hosting and being hosted so that as we share this gift with one another, we share not only Jesus, but we share the one who sent Jesus to us. It is in your Son's great name that we pray these things. Amen. Look forward to being with you Wednesday and then again next Sunday morning. And I hope you have a blessed week. Good night.